Dear viewers, welcome to the weekly gaming update featuring cool indie games, new titles you haven't heard of, patch news and releases. Slow week because of the holidays, but I'm committed to this series, so we're making it. Thanks for joining, let's dive in. And hey, if you like these cute little updates and find them helpful, maybe subscribe, like the video or give me a recommendation in the comments for a new game to check out. I'm always looking forward to those. Starting with reveals and announcements, Path of Exile announced their new timeline for patch 3.17. It is expected to launch early February, which means that Scourge Lake is going to be extended for at least two weeks. Officially, the holidays are stated for the delay and giving the team the time to recharge their batteries, as they have been working hard all year. I'm sure that's true, but it can't be the only reason, right? I mean, Christmas and the holiday season isn't exactly an unexpected event. It's not like they just figured out Christmas existed. I think what they're trying to do here as well is slowly move back to the old release schedule which got messed up after they delayed the league for a whole month because of the Cyberpunk 2077 release. Since they made that decision, they can't release a league in December anymore, at least not on the current schedule, which is a pity because December nets them the most income of the year. So I'm expecting a few more extended leagues this year to move back towards that December release window, which is totally reasonable by the way. What is interesting about February is that the 11th of February lost ARC releases in most EU countries and North America, not in mine due to gambling laws, but that's another topic, lost ARC could be considered a pretty strong competitor however, so releasing the same week or very close to the same week as Lost Ark might be a bad idea. And later in February, Elden Ring releases, maybe less of a direct rival but probably the most anticipated game of 2022. With Cyberpunk 2077 that was enough reason for a delay, that is how they ended up in this situation in the first place. So it's interesting to see that apparently Elden Ring doesn't have that status and it seems to have the same amount of hype. Dead Cells has another DLC in the pipeline, available January 6th for 5 bucks. It's called The Queen and the Sea. This DLC funds ongoing developments of Dead Cells, the ever popular roguelike side scroller, and it brings two new biomes and a new boss. This actually happened two weeks ago, this trailer, but I missed it. The two new endgame biomes include the infested shipwreck inhabited by eldritch horrors and the lighthouse, mostly a vertical design of course, with trolleys, barrels and a lot of fire. The final boss is a familiar one with a twist. He resides in the crown. Talking about crowns, King's Bounty 2 has delayed their second patch, which was supposed to go live in November or December. No new release date was provided apart from early 2022, although the playtest form mentions it is likely to release in less than a month. King's Bounty 2 was not the game people were hoping for, sitting at a 63% user rating at Steam, getting lukewarm reviews, just overall mediocre. The devs took a gamble with a new direction which didn't succeed. The game's difficulty is currently one of the main issues and patch 2 is supposed to bring multiple difficulty levels so people can actually complete this narrative driven game without too much frustration. Then the Patch Plaza with an overview of patch news. The Fermi Paradox released patch 0.64, their Mars update. This is a space simulator where your goal is to solve the Fermi Paradox, which goes like this. This is in real life, by the way. If you calculate the odds of alien life existing within our observable universe with all the other billions and billions of star systems and planets out there, alien life should exist, mathematically speaking. However, we haven't seen any alien life up until now, blurry flying saucers excluded. That is the paradox. Aliens should exist, but we never spotted them. And in this game, you control multiple star systems and influence certain events in order to make several galactic civilizations contact each other. You solve the paradox that way, and then they wipe each other out. Super fun. This patch brings a new species, the Quasis. A new evolution event got added in case you wipe out the humans, which I managed to do an awful lot in the demo. A new technology level, the superluminal age with faster than light events. Unique technology levels for aquatic species and expect modern outfits for all the strange creatures available in this game. This early access game is super niche but really amazing. 
Tavern Master, or as I like to call it, Tavern Tycoon, released a new update. This early access game has you in charge of a medieval tavern and the launch was already solid with more stuff coming up. How about achievements? Or more precise placement options allowing for more freedom while decorating, big optimizations, photo mode, new light sources and other bug fixes. This update then completes the December part of the roadmap, meaning the solo dev making this game is so far on schedule. Then releases. It is still very, very quiet. Until January 12th, we got nothing released. So you'll need to wait till next week's episode. Time for some personal updates. What have I been up to? I've been mainly writing a lot of scripts. Despite the drought in current games, I have a lot of videos planned that I am excited about. I'm still playing Last Epoch even after I've made all the videos about it. I'm trying out more builds I'm using the build planner this time. It's such an amazing tool and so smooth to use. I took a few hours to theory craft a build and now I'm putting it to the test and it works well. Loot filter is automatically generated and with a few tweaks you're good to go. I'm quite impressed. Previously I just created characters and tried out stuff on the fly but this is a nice approach. I like it. I've been playing Anvil quite a bit on Game Pass. That game is absolutely brutal at the start at least. It's a roguelite so I suppose it's fine but I am a filthy casual and I got a little disheartened there. However, I persevered and I'm slowly climbing the ranks, unlocking more relics, getting better control over my vault breaker, learning the boss fights and overall I've started to enjoy this game. I'm doing a few sessions a day usually, I might make a video about it, we will see. So far I would say it's definitely worth checking out. And that's it for this week. If you have any questions or remarks, put them in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did and you want more like this, consider liking the video or even subscribing. Thanks for watching and for making it to the end. Love you all. See you soon. Bye bye.